Hello, hello, everybody. So it's been a little bit of um, time since I did a last stream on this, but I've been working hard on my podcast automation platform, which is really, really cool. Like, I'm surprised how much I've been able to ch achieve here. And honestly, a lot of it isn't my work. It's just sort of piggybacking off the amazing work of other people. Like, um, I was able to create a clean podcast script using Socks, um, which is working really nicely now. In fact, let me run you through everything that's happening now. If I go into the published podcast orchestrator um, here, this is basically my job pipeline. So the idea is I've got a bus down here and it goes through all of my jobs that haven't been complete yet. And here they are here. So we download and store the audio file. We grab that out of Dropbox. We store it locally. Then I clean the podcast audio file. This is the really cool part. Um, basically, I've got a way that I can clean my podcast knowing that it will work reasonably well with my setup. So that's what this is here. It's a script that I found. And this is kind of like a com command line version of Audacity. So I was able to basically create this simple script that does that. Uh, and I found once I found out that it's really easy to run like an SH script um, in PHP, it's really easy to do. And even like log out the output, then, um, you know, that kind of uh, made a lot of this possible because I can sort of delegate off to um, uh, basically anything that's available on a Linux computer. Um, so I've also got publish episode to podcast platform. So that's um, going to publish to transistor.fm, which is really cool. That happens for me. Um, and the other thing is just creating a branded link. So I'm using rebrandly's API to actually create a branded link and save that so that later on when I do social posting for this, I'm going to have a branded link that I can use. So it looks really cool. So yeah, I'm really happy with the progress um, so far. Had to bang my head a couple of times. But now the thing that I want to work on is generating a cover image. So let's go back. Um, uh, this is kind of my timeline of things that I've done. I can probably start like marking these off as ticked now. I like doing things in this very visual way. It just, just feels really nice. So we can clean the audio script. Um, predicting the publish date. I've done that. So it predicts the publish date for me. It uploads it to Transistor FM. Um, it stores um, the podcast link so that I can then use that link and generate a branded link. So all of that's done. The next thing I'm going to do now is generating the cover image. And I've already sort of tested this and I can sort of get that working and convert the podcast to video um, with the cover image, which I've also figured out that piece of the puzzle. So now I'm just kind of like stringing those pieces of the puzzle together. All right. So next thing I'm going to do, I think, is going to Canva and just create a basic cover image sort of setup. So I might just copy one of these ones. Um, and the idea is I'm just going to whack some text in there and try and create a script that makes the text at least relatively the right size. So we'll get it to add in the episode number there. So we can maybe get rid of the 48 part. Or maybe how about this? We get rid of that part there. This part we automatically generate. Um, I don't know. We'll, it will, should I keep the image of me there? And now we, we kind of want to imagine, let me just copy that again. We kind of want to imagine now that that text is going to be sitting in here somewhere. And I don't know how to do that in such a way that it's going to look beautiful still. All right, so you can kind of imagine it might sit over here. Uh, let's move these pieces up a bit. They're going to have to go somewhere else now because I can't do this dynamically anymore. I need to be a little bit more careful with how I set it up. Um, let's make that white. And the idea is this text here, that's the part that's going to be dynamic when I build this. So let's make that white. And imagine that it's got an area that is approximately that. Because we kind of need to like, um, or maybe if I flip the text side there. Yeah, something like that maybe. We could probably get rid of the Quasar View Life text, maybe, because it might be obvious to the the person seeing this cover image that it is the Quasar View Life podcast. Because well, I guess I'll see it in the video title. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to do, but I'm just gonna have to do my best. I think maybe we can add. You know what? Let's use this image up here. So I might have to bring that forward a little bit. Position. To, uh, where is it? forward just sort of bring that to the top make it a bit smaller yeah i guess we could do something like that maybe and maybe that text could be on that side um yeah maybe sit it okay this this is probably going to look a little bit better if it's centered oh, so they both need to be dynamic 
And now maybe we can grab that and sort of center that a little bit to make it look good. I guess we could get rid of my image and just center the text. Yeah, what would that look like? Let's move the image of me out. Um, oh, screw it, I might just delete it. Yeah, let's just delete it. And then let's center this text and see if that looks decent enough. It doesn't need to be perfect, I don't think, for now. Just want a really nice thing that I can automatically generate and know that it's going to look reasonably good every time. Yeah, all right, so let's go for that. All right. I don't think that's too bad. Maybe we could add like a bit of a background to that. Um, believe it or not, I find this to be the boring part. <laughs> uh, I guess I could make this gray and then um, a little bit transparent or a lot transparent. So we could do something like that, bring this to the front and then put it on top. So let's say, oh, is that already on top? Yeah, seems to be the case. Just trying to find a nice way that we can um sort of frame this. This is why I really need like an artist on my team or something like that. Because currently I do not ah oh, bugger. So that's have they got a rectangle that I can actually resize properly? Oh great, I can't even delete that now. It's glitching out on me. All right, let's try page refresh. Oh, this is never the Never the fun part for me. I always just want this stuff to be done so I can sort of like push on, write some code. All right, so let's get rid of that. Cool. So we use this instead and do something like this. There we go. And then we'll make this, um, maybe we'll make that white, but then super transparent like that. And then grab the text and make sure that's at the top. Bring to front. Yep, that should have done it. Oh, what have I done? I've made a new page. Nitty. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, okay, maybe white was a poor choice because that's the background color. So let's make this black, um, but not blue. Let's make it like a full-on black color and make it stand out a little bit more. Oh, that doesn't really work either. Uh, maybe like this blue color, but then we'll make it super transparent. Maybe that'll work. Just add like a bit of a tinge to it. Yeah, all right, maybe. I, okay, I'm feeling that. And sort of put that like in the center around here. And then we could tell this text that it needs to basically make sure that it fits reasonably well inside of there. Move it to there, maybe over to there. <laughs> no, that looks atrocious. Oh, God. Man, if any of you are an artist and just want to like build something for me, you'll be my best friend for eternity. All right, I'm just going to go with that. I couldn't be bothered doing this anymore. I just don't feel like it's a great use of my time. All right, so we're just going to put white text in there and then I'm just taking my jumper off so i'm going to make a copy of this now and then get rid of the text just so we can use this as a reference of what it should look like so get rid of that get rid of that cool so well let's just call this like podcast podcast cover template i'll do get rid of that get rid of that and this is our template for the podcast cover. And now we need to be able to automatically generate text that will go into there using code. So let's go ahead and download this. Give that a second to run. There we go. And then I want to use that as my new template now. Image templates. Oh, that never works the first time. There you go. Worked the second time though. So that was the one that I was testing on. I was able to get working. Let's get rid of that. And now basically we want to see if we can get some text up here and some text down here. And look, I don't know how much success I'm going to have with this. So let's just have a crack at it and see what happens though. Now, 
That's right. I was using intervention image. I'm used to using three screens. So let's just do our best here. And basically, we're jumping into image templates. We're grabbing our cover image template, which we have now called podcast cover template. Now, let's bring it back to um, cover image template podcast. And you can imagine a future where maybe somebody could like upload their own or something like that. But you just want to get some, you know, things working to begin with. So let's just copy that name, open up Tinkerwell again. And there it is there. So that's our cover image template. We've got a, that's where we're storing it. So into podcast one. Yep. So this is, that one is going to represent episode one. That's the old image that I managed to get working where it's just sort of throwing it directly in the center there. So we can go ahead and delete that. Um, let's go back and make sure everything lines up here. We've got our font that we're pulling in and let's just run this and see what happens. So we have a reference point. All right. We've already got some sort of an error here. Which honestly, I don't know what it is. Cause I'm pretty sure we had things working. A moment ago. So what I often do in this case is I just comment things out and then bring them back in to sort of try and drill down on where the, where the error is. This is one of the downfalls of Tinkerwell. It's for, oh, okay, it's the font size I think I didn't put in there. So let's just say 45 as a starting point. I don't even know what that's going to do. And that worked. Um, oh, wait, I think I had some more stuff still commented out. Yeah, let's bring this back in, see if that actually did work. Nice. And now we come back here. Is this going to refresh for me? Oh, bugger. It might not. Um, oh, no, that's the image. Cool. All right. So we've got some text in there. Um, now what we want to do is try and make that dynamically sized properly. By the way, I totally stole this um, script off of um, Stack Overflow. So that's obviously the image dimensions. And it's saying that we're going to center it with the which divide with divided by two x why though that's actually going to be slightly different because we want the height divided by two but then we want to subtract a little bit more because you've also got this area up here um so i might honestly i'm probably just going to guesstimate that for now and we might sort of dig more into what it is later on Let me just throw my consult my um, browser down there all right so let's go um negative i don't know that might be about 80 pixels maybe 120 pixels actually Let's run that. Refresh straight away? No. Okay, that's going to actually add pixels. Does it? Let's think about this. All right, so I don't just want to center it. I want to add an offset as well. Center Y. Oh, no. Okay, then we want to add 120 pixels. I think that'll work fine. All right, so that's almost centered. And now let's move that back to maybe. 90. Um, there's got to be a better way to do this. I always, I always go full screen. So it's kind of harder for me to like, oh, there we go. Woohoo. Right. Now we're talking. Jump out of full screen here. Um, and now we can much more easily get some feedback here. I might even close that out. I'm not saving there. Yeah, all right. We'll save that. Cool. Let's see if this will work on the fly now. Let's um, change this to something a bit chaotic so I can... Oh, now this isn't working. Ah, oh, come on, Tinkerwell. Yeah, sometimes that happens when you resize the app. Let's just get out of it and get back into it again. See if that works. Give it a second. Yeah, Tinkerwell does take a while to start because it's an Electron app, but it's totally worth it because it's so freaking handy. All right, it's not going to work. So let's try changing this to 150 and see if it changes right away. Refresh it. Cool, it does change straight away. Um, 90. Nice, right, so this is going to make it really easy to work with. 90 looks about right to me. I might say 95, just because I'm a little bit persnickety like that. 95. Yeah, whatever, that'll do. Um, max length. I think that means the max length of the text. So we might need to make this dynamic depending on how much text there is. So I'll keep my eye on that. So that's a font size of 120. That's also going to have to be 
dynamic. So what we'll probably end up doing is counting the letters and trying to like figure out the best size that we, basically just the best size that we can. I'm gonna move the text up here. And maybe we can say, for example, text length, and we might use that for some of our calculations as well. So I think you can say len like that and just put the text right through in PHP. Let's give that a try. Um, control R, so it just runs that. Or lens or something like that. All right, fine, I'm gonna Google it. Um, PHP get uh, string length. S-T-R-L-E-N, that'll do it. Sweet, let's throw that back on my other screen. And then S-T-R-L-E-N, grab that, just run that snippet of code. And there we go. So we can very easily figure out the text length now. And let's imagine a more realistic title. And let's use one that I've actually used in the past. So I'm going to go back to Canva on my other screen here and copy that text and paste it in here. This is an example, a real world example of a title of one of my podcasts. So let's run that. Okay, so right off the bat, we can see a few things don't make a lot of sense. So how about we say, we want the text size to be a ratio based on the text length, don't we? So how about we say font size is the text length um, multiplied by, I don't know, this, see, this is where my math is really bad. Well, okay, let me think of this logically. If there is more text, we want the number to be um, we want this number to be smaller. So it's gonna have to be something like zero point something nine. And I guess we could grab that and then multiply that by something. I bet you a lot of you math people are just like screaming at the screen, probably thinking. Oh, there's a better way to do it, but I don't know maths very well. You probably want a clamp alternative. Um, max, min, and scaling in between. Can you like give me a better idea of what you mean by that? It sounds like you know what you're talking about here. So you got like, I think you're saying you've got like a range. Do, you do we have a minimum though? We don't really have a minimum. It's more like a ratio, isn't it? I'm sorry, like I'm really bad at understanding this kind of thing. Let's change that to 250 and just see what happens. Is this working at all? Doesn't look like it is. What if I just made it 250 on its own? Hmm, 400. All right, so we're getting some, is this just not updating? Maybe that's what it is. Uh, let's close out of that and go back into image.png. Right, I don't know what's going on there. Am I doing it in the, was I doing it in the wrong spot? No, font size. What do we have originally? At 120, refresh that. Nothing happened. Let's change it to 50 and refresh it again. And once again, nothing happened. What about font height? If we set that to 100, what happens? I've done this in the past and it worked. So looks like there's something going on in this function here. I'm just joining. So it and Jaron, you would want your font not to be larger than a certain size, no matter how short the text. Actually, that's a good point. Um, so when I'm finished with this, that's a good point. I probably want to add in some sort of a safeguard that basically says, um, don't let it get to this size. Like set, set a min and max here so you don't end up with a ridiculous example, just in case someone puts in a really, um, like a really short text. like the word the or something like that. Anyway, um, let's keep going here. What, it, what if I get rid of some of the text here? May I probably need to spend some more time understanding this code here. All right, so now let's change this to um, 150. 
I'm not changing anything. Let's see what happens if I bring the height back to its original value to see if that's actually affecting it. Ah. Weird, I tested this before and it seemed to work fine. Wait, font size again. I, I'm redefining the font size. Why would I do that? That's why it wasn't working. Oh my gosh. Bet some of you saw that. <laughs> All right, so we can come back here. Let's change that to 300 just to see if it works. Okay, and it definitely does work. All right, so let's come back here again. Bring back um, bring back the, an idea of what we had before. So basically I was saying text length multiplied by um, 0 0.9 maybe. No, because then you have to make it a lot bigger than that. Oh no, wait, that's actually worked out pretty good. Let's change that to a one. All right. What about a, no, four is going to be too much. So let's say maybe 1.4. And I think we could go all the way up to a two there. Okay, to me, that's starting to look good. I might I might go a little bit, a little bit more. So maybe 2.4. Cool. And now we can start thinking about um, making sure that it overflows properly. So we want to get, it's basically looking at the entire image width. So how about we say width um, minus, I don't know, 90 maybe? Let's try that. Mm, okay, no, wait, that's actually making the image itself. Oh, actually, it might have more to do with these values here. So basically, I want to say, I want you to overflow a little bit earlier. What happens if I change this? Has that got to do with the entire image? I think it does because it affects that canvas part. No, it doesn't. Okay, so it's affecting that section there. because this is So this is kind of like an overlay. So what we could actually do, um, let's get rid of... Uh, how about we change this to maybe like um, 1,000? Cool. Mm. I know I'm not explaining a lot what I'm doing right now, but that's partly because I don't have a great idea of what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, but the the text is still overflowing though, even if I change the width there. So if I said that, just to a thousand, for example, all that's really doing is moving it. It's not changing the text width. So let's bring it back to that original setting. That's just centering it. That's saying the max length of the text. That also needs to be dynamic as well. So how about this? Um, let's refresh that again. And say this is that um, and maybe times 0 0.3 maybe. All right, so that wasn't a bad first try, 0 0.5. It's too much, 0 0.4. And maybe 4, 5. That's too much as well, 0 0.43 or 2. And we'll go down to 4, 1, I reckon. Cool. What happens, just out of curiosity, if I do that now? All right, it all goes to shit. It's making it even smaller. So I've gotten something blatantly wrong there in my equation. That's going to make it end up with a smaller number. So we don't want to multiply there. We actually want to divide it by both of these situations um, and then set this to like a really high number. As you can see, clearly, math is not my forte. Um, and then font size as well. <laughs> God, I'm doing here. 
Yeah, so what? Are, let's find out what these numbers actually end up as what now. Okay, so that needs to be a lot larger. Uh, and we want we want to figure out the font um, size and also the max length. But let's just do another dump for the max length. Okay, so max length for this, we probably want it to sit at a, around the number th like 32 maybe. So we need to get it to there, which is probably going to be more like Oh no, this needs to be divided by a smaller number, 0 0.3. Literally failed math, I'm not even joking. Cool, okay, now we're getting there. Um, so I probably want 0 point, let's try 0 0.2, no, 0 0.4. Um, so about 0 0.55, I feel like that's probably going to be good for the font size. Five. And the max length is going to have to be way, way smaller number. So let's try maybe like 50 there. What does that give me? Um, let's try 20. Much smaller than that even. So let's go four. All right, now we're getting there. I don't know if anything I've done right now has been correct math though so let's actually see if it checks out i don't i might have just recreated the same problem yeah i did god i have no idea what i'm doing all right luke stop and think if we have less text we want the max length to be a larger number So is it meant to be something like this? Um, it's meant to be something like that. I'll uh, say four there. And I think it's kind of a similar PR. Let's do that maybe and say zero point. I don't know, we'll start with anything to begin with. We're getting 4.0 there for that. Uh, we really should swap these around, shouldn't we? So that it's a little bit easier to tell the difference between them. All right, so that again. So that's the max length. That needs to be a much higher number. So let's bring that up to, I th actually, I think this need, number needs to go down to make that number higher now. No, I was blatantly wrong. Six, maybe like 14. Hmm. Oh, of course that's going to give me the... Okay, I've gotten these the wrong way around, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm making such a fool of myself, but I really don't care. I want people to know that you can have a day job as a developer and know absolutely nothing about math. And this is like the first time in a very long time that I've done math as a developer. Um, 22. So we want to bring that number way down. 100. Yeah, we've had a lot of progress. I'm sorry I didn't stream more. I think I just got... It's something that gets really frustrating. And I think I just needed a little bit of like me time staring at the screen. And through that, I think I was able to get like quite a bit done. Actually, let's see if I can share this, my Miro board, because I'd love to share with you guys the thing, and then you can see me putting the ticks in and like view the progress. All right, give me a second, and then you can have a look at it. Um, share. Here we go. Anyone with the link, and we'll just say can view. Let's go with that. Okay, so let's... Yeah, I just want to make sure that you guys can't edit it because otherwise someone's going to watch this and do something swanky. All right, I'm going to post that. So if any of you want to have a look at kind of like um, the whole, the sort of grand scheme of things, then um, yeah, check that out. I don't think I posted on Periscope. So sorry, Periscope people. Something, something went wrong there. 
Okay, let's keep going. Go back to my comments section so I can see. Um, what were we doing? 31 is probably a good number there. Now we want to do the same thing here where we switch them around. And let's change this to, okay, so that's 31. We want this number to be a lot larger than that. So let's say maybe 300. No, 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 wait. Does making this number smaller make it bigger? Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. We're getting some progress. Let's try 30. All right. Now let's see if that actually worked. Or... Oh, oh, man, Luke. If anybody like knows that the the equation for this i like it's really hard to do math especially when you're live streaming because usually i just need to like r get a piece of paper out in front of me and just sit there and stare at it for a while but I, i'm kind of reluctant to do that in the live stream text length so imagine that's a five and then this is a five that would equal one if this were a larger number like a 10 that number would be smaller, which means more text means smaller. Doesn't it? But I can try. What's this? Was it for, I'm a potato, but I can try. What is it for? Oh, what's, oh, okay. What's the, um, the Miro board thing for? All right. I'll quickly, you know what? I'll quickly run you through it. Um, basically, the first live stream was me coming up with this concept I had where I just want to be able to save a podcast into a Dropbox folder. That's this part here. And all I have to do is this gray part. I save a file. Oh, what's it? Sorry, what's the equation for? All right, let's get out of that then. <laughs> what, so what I want to do here is this um so we've got some text if we have more text then the font size needs to be a smaller number and so does the max length um if we have less text then the max length and font size needs to be a larger number so i'm trying to create some sort of a ratio between the the amount of text and the font size and um max length I mean, eventually the font height as well. And so the idea is um, by combining, uh, by getting that ratio right, I can then like resize the text in here based on how much text is available. All right, let me, you, I think you're telling me that you were enjoying that. So let me just quickly come back here and I'll go through it um, quickly, as quickly as I can. So you upload, I upload a um, raw audio to Dropbox um, and I give it a little JSON file with a title description and a post description when I'm to automatically post it to social media, all that kind of stuff, right? And this is all I have to do. And then my this thing that I'm creating takes over from there. Dropbox notices that something has changed and then it gets that file, right? So this will be sitting in a folder called like um, one, for example, podcast episode one. It takes that podcast file, serves, um, stores it on my server. Then it saves that episode information from the JSON here into the database, right? So basically modeling the podcast. Um, and then using a script that I created, I clean that audio file and I've actually got that to successfully work, which is really cool using a program, a, a command line tool called SOX, S-O-X. It's like audacity for the command line. Really, really cool. And then what that does is that cleans the audio and gives me a new version of the podcast, which is going to sound a lot better. Gives me a bit more bass to my voice. So I sound sexy and all that jazz. Um, then I predict the publish, the Transistor is um, what I use to publish my podcast. And using that API, I predict when the next podcast should be published. So if the latest podcast is published in seven days, then what I do is I release a podcast every three days. So it talks to the API, finds out when the latest podcast date is and adds three days to it, right? Um, and then saves that into the database so that it knows to publish the podcast three days later than the currently latest podcast. Hopefully that made sense, right? Basically, we're figuring out the date that we want to schedule um, the podcast. Then I upload it to Transistor FM. 
Then I store that podcast um, link, which I just, by uploading it to Transistor, they give me a link, right, um, for so people can view the podcast when it's released. So I take that link and then I create a branded link using Rebrandly. So Rebrandly allows me to do stuff like this. Quay's, what is it? Quay.sarl. This is a special like link shortener that I created especially for Quasar. And then I can see dot pod, um, you know, 42, for example. And that would take you to, no, not pod, sorry, it's just P, P42. And that's a very short link that can take you to episodes of my podcast, right? And it looks like that one. Do I have one for 42? No, let's try one for like, I think the newer ones I've done it for though. Maybe 42 isn't released yet. It's probably not. Anyway, some of those podcasts will work. I haven't done them all. So yeah, um, it would then get a special branded link. That's what I've done so far. Okay, all of this is working. I'm so excited. It's so freaking cool. It actually works. Now, the next thing I'm, and this is the step I'm up to now, is to generate a cover image based on the podcast episode. So I have a podcast episode. Let me just give you an example of what we've got in here. Um, well, here's my database. Let's just do it this way. No, let's use Tinkerwell. That'd be cooler. Uh, so let's come in here. And if I say here, for example, podcast episode, I think it might automatically import that. Try that. I'm going to do it on the bottom screen in case there's information that you're not allowed to see. Uh, description. It's got an ID. No, nothing that you can't see. So check this out. Um, this is an example of one that's already gone through a lot of that process. I've got the audio share URL. And like I said before, I took that URL and I turned it into a branded audio link URL, which is this one here. Um, that won't work because I've since deleted it because I've been in, you know, testing everything. And I'm also making it so that you can select your own provider. So you can say, for example, I want to use Rebrandly or maybe you want to use Bitly. Um, et cetera. So later on down the line, I'd love to have different provider support. Um, got the description, the title, all of that has been put into the database and modeled there. And then also, sorry, I know I'm going really fast here. So a lot of you probably can't keep up, but um, where's, oh, here it is over here. Also, then I've got this folder here. This is the stuff that was pulled from Dropbox. That's the raw audio file. Um, this is the cleaned audio file. That was me playing around with MP3s because I couldn't get it working with a WAV, but I eventually did. And now what I'm trying to do is get that image file in there. And that's what we're working on right now. That's the step that we're up to. And just to give you a fuller picture before I move on, I will then convert the podcast to a video with the cover image. I've got that working as well. So I created a script that can do that. That's actually surprisingly easier than generating a cover image. Um, so there's an FFmpeg library that will just do all the work for me. So I just found a script online. It's pretty much just <laughs> doing it all for me. Then I upload that video to YouTube. So I've got a YouTube version of the podcast. And then I'll update my um, model of the podcast with that new YouTube information. And then this is the exciting part. Um, now I've got, I'm going to create this podcast episode social posts concept, right? Where I basically can connect a podcast to a whole bunch of different social media outlets. And then I'm going to have a job for every single post. Um, and I'm going to create a post for that podcast scheduled in the future. And it will automatically figure out when to schedule the post. So for example, it'll schedule the post when the podcast is released and then maybe a day after or something like that to remind people of the podcast. And then through all of these platforms, I'm going to connect to their APIs using the same contract. So they've all got a similar API. And then it will post to all of these social networks, right? So all of that is going to happen for me. And all I had to do was this record the podcast, give it a title description and post description. So at the moment, like I said, I've gotten up to here, all of the um, publishing part for the podcast is done. And now you are watching me working on generating the cover image. So without further ado, <laughs> let's continue. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that little journey. Um, that little tidbit then. And now let's go back into here and I can start scratching my brain again. And you know, it's funny because I was able to do all of that, but I can't do basic math. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is incredibly impressive. It is awesome to see something like this. Wouldn't it be cool? I'm actually thinking I would love to um, maybe sell something like this online. I've never done um, a SaaS before. 
I'd love to sell this online and maybe use like a lot of the profits to donate to Quasar. Um, or I could make it another thing I've thought is, hey, why not make this open source, but also get people to pay for um, hosting. So I could have a service that hosts it, but it's open source. And that way I benefit because other people can like give me feedback on the code and add features and stuff like that. Uh, but then they benefit as well because since they're a programmer, they can use it for free. So it's kind of a win-win. You know, honestly, I'd probably make less money that way, but it, it's cool. Like that's, you know, open source. You might make less money, but you end up with something way cooler and something that's way better. So yeah, I'm thinking I'll probably end up going down um, down that avenue, but hey, it's early days. First, we need to get this cover image working. Now, let's do an extreme example here. If I do that, then the text length, and let's just do a dump here just in case that function isn't working. That should be two. There we go, it's two. And now basically what we want is, um, if I say the number two, in fact, let's, I, why don't I just do some basic math here so I can figure out the formula first. Let's imagine we've got um, the number, I don't know, a text length of two, and we multiply that by 0 0.5. I'm just going to do some basic math to put it in my head. Um, I don't want that. I just want to know the, the dump of that. And yeah. Okay, so we got 1.0. 1, 1. That makes sense to me. Now, that number is larger. We want the text size to be smaller. So that is not the case in this case. So what I might have to do is say, Multiplied, I thought I had to do multiplied by that over four because as this number gets larger, we'll put that in parentheses. Um, hang on, I don't even know basic division. See, this is what happens when you do math on. I act like, you know what, let's like, let me just call myself out here. I act like it's because I'm doing a live stream, but the reality is I am this bad at math. I believe I could get better with work, but. I just don't put the time and effort into getting better at math because it's not something I care about in my life. All right, so I changed that to a two now. It is a larger number. If I change it to a one, it is a larger number. Therefore, I can make this part here is going to make the lar the number larger. Found this any good? Are you asking if my stream is good? I don't know. Honestly, there's probably a lot of really exciting bits and probably a lot of very boring bits as well. Um, this is the math part, so it's probably very boring. All right. By reading all the comments, I'm probably like super distracting myself here, but I, I, I can't help it. It's a live stream, it's what you do. So divided by four, let's say divided. Um, so this allows me no, the code pen above. I don't think it's a code pen. It should be a, um, or did somebody post a code pen on YouTube and I can't see it? I posted a Miro board, which is basically um, a rundown of my, um, like what I'm doing in this, in this live stream. Man, I get distracted easily. So theoretically then, all I need to do is change this number. So the text length there, that oh no because then we need to multiply it by something don't we so maybe it's because i was getting them the wrong way around and i actually want to do this ah so this then normalizes it back i posted a code posted a code pen for altering text size based on length oh i can't see it maybe it's because it's on like the youtube thing and i'm on my stream yard thing all right i'm going to take a look in a second Okay, so if it's 100, so let, let's use a longer text there, and that should make the number smaller. It did. Okay, so this is the key. And then all I have to do is change that to change the ratio. But I want to just go check out um, Chocolate's um, code pen quickly. So let me see if I can find that. View on YouTube. There we go. Let's bring that up here.
Oh, can hear myself. I'm not seeing the code pen, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. All right. So anyway, I've I've gotten this working now. I think that's I think what I've just figured out there is the key. I just got the fraction on the wrong side. So let's take this now, cut it, and like I did before, we now put it on that side, and then. Uh, what do we do here, though? We want to say, for example, 0 0.5 times that. That gives us our ratio. And then we multiply it by the thing that's going to, like, um, I guess you could say, like, renormalize it. All right. So let's just copy paste that here as well. And now we can start playing around with these numbers. And um, just comment that out for now. Cool, we got 500, 500. And if I make that text smaller, it should be even larger. <laughs> oh, okay, this is meant to be division. I thought I was going crazy for a second then. Okay, so that gives me 25. If I give it more text, it should get even smaller. And it does. Great. Now we just need to make this normalizing number a lot larger. And honestly, 300 probably isn't enough. You've got to be a lot more than that. Let's try maybe 1,200. All right. So let's change those to twos. All right. I think this might actually work this time. And this is, I think, where... um. What was it? Is his name Tom? Let me just look up. Yeah, I think this is where Tom's idea would start coming into play, where you want to make sure that it doesn't end up being too large. Um, I'm not going to implement that now, but I'm going to keep that at the back of my head. Because if the text is too large, it just becomes unreadable. Definitely something I agree with. All right, so that looks like a pretty good size text to me. If I change this text now to um, something really small, like SM, is that going to be way too big? Yeah, so we'd have to do some sort of normalizing again. So it's almost like you need another ratio sitting on this side of the equation. So maybe let's try this. Let's going to mess around here and see what happens. Right, let's go with that. That makes it even bigger, of course, which makes sense. Oh, here we go. I'm, I'm seeing something from Tom. Scale percent equals text length minus min bound divided by max bound. Okay, let's see if we can implement that in some way. So... We've got min bound is equal to uh, maybe something like 300. So this is min, so maybe like 150. Max bound is equal to maybe like 400. And this is probably going to have to be even lower than that, honestly, because you might end up with really long text. Okay, so now we can find out, so I'm just going to type what you've got here, Tom. Font size is equal to scale. Uh, we have to actually, we, oh no, we're doing the scale percent first, which is, ah, I'm getting more messages. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to like pinpoint this one message at the same time. I wish I could copy paste here, but I can't. Uh, text length. This is great. I'm just getting like free code here. Minus by min bound divided by the max bound. I don't know why the max bound is in parentheses, but it seems like it's probably important. Oh, okay, this might be an order of operations thing. I get the feeling that Tom is a little bit better than me or a little lot better than me at math. Thank you, Tom. 
All right, I just want to see what I get there and let's play around with the scale size. So 1.75, cool. So ideally then, as my text gets larger, that scale size, okay, so the scale size gets larger, but I'll look at the rest of your equation because I'm guessing it'll account for that. So then you're telling me that you then say font size is equal to, um, you didn't call it scale size, you call it scale, scale percent, which does make more sense. Uh, scale percent multiplied by max font minus min font plus the min font. Okay. You're starting to lose me here, which probably means that we're onto something. <laughs> okay, no, that does make sense to me. Okay, so let's get a look at that. Okay, so we now we need to set the max font and the min font. Is is that right? Let's say. And the max font is probably going to be something quite large, something like 500 pixels. And then the minimum font, 100. Or is the max font... Yeah. So is the, is the max and min... Um, what am I saying? Is the min bound and the max bound different from the min font and the max font, or are they meant to be the same thing? All right, we're getting some sort of result here. Let me just try and open this in YouTube because I want to see if I can just copy paste what you've got there. Um, view on YouTube. Sweet. Let's do this on the bottom screen. So I can handle this more easily. Oh, yes, it's going to let me... Um, min bound is the smallest length you think the text could be. Um, font size is equal to... All right, so let me grab... That. Okay, it looks like this might be the same thing. Um, there, so I'll convert this to PHP now. Scott scale, and then N scale. Yeah, PHP does, um, no, sorry, YouTube does not make this easy. So is that the text length then? I'm getting confused now. There's too many written things. Or is it just, or is it that last one? Do I only need the last one? Scale percent equals text length minus min bound. Do I only need the last one? Or do I need the other ones as well, Tom? Okay, so text length I've got, min bound. Okay, so let's go with that. I think that's what you're saying. Yeah, okay, min font equals this. I, I, I'm getting, okay, the part I... So which equation do I use then? Am I using this one here or the other one? The top one or this bottom one here? I mean, I wish there was no delay on YouTube live streaming, but unfortunately there is. So that gives me, let me just play around with this more. So if I give that a larger number, it gives me something smaller, which is exactly what I want. Something. Yeah. Cool. Bottom one. Okay. All right. Well, let's have a play around with this now. Dude, you're a legend. Seriously. It's... 
always good to have somebody who knows math as a friend. So Tom, be my friend. <laughs> All right. So now we've got our scale percentage. Let's see how it works out. Um, where are we put, putting it again? We're putting it, um, we'll leave those there. So all we need to do, I think, is use the scale percentage and multiply it by something. Multiply it by the either the min bound or the max bound. Is that how it works? Oh, obviously not for this one, max length. That I will probably hard code. Oh, no, I wouldn't hard code that. Even that one would be in there. So let's try maybe like a three there. Um, and just do that as a starting point. So this needs to be much higher. So maybe something like, all right, I've got another one here. Here we go. Font size is equal to. All right, yeah, let's use the word font instead of bound now. Your min bound should be something like five characters. Max bound should be something like 200. I'm confused. Are they, is there a difference between bound and font? <laughs> I feel like I need to just like invite you into a live coding session. Oh crap. I need to leave in four minutes. I got the Quasar team meeting soon. Max bound should be. Oh man. I really wanted to get this done too. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I know this, this delay is really like messing with things. Okay. So the font size like, let me know if I'm getting this wrong. I'm sorry, this must be very frustrating with my tiny little math brain. Multiplied by, all right, so the max font minus the min font plus the min font. So I'm guessing that's accounting for, okay. Oh, whoops, I tried to save it, cancel. So how about this? Let's just do a dump of both of those so we can get an idea of where we're at. Get all of this. We'll just return true there. That's fine. What have I done? In font, whoops. Um, I mean font. So that's my scale percentage. All right, what have I got wrong here? Um, this is a longer title. And the font size is going up. It should be going down though. You're probably pulling your hair out, looking at me thinking, ah, what have you done, Luke? You've messed it up. Yeah, so a smaller number is giving a smaller amount of text is giving me a smaller number. Okay, so it looks like you're sending a code pen to the best of your ability. Um, where's that code pen? Oh, you're bootable. I feel like I've seen you around the place. Wait, I think, have I talked to you on Discord, Tom? And not known that it was the same person? I bet you I have. CodePen.io slash D0 slash pen. And is that an O or a zero? I don't know. Zero. E. Q. V. 
and question mark editors equals one, two, three, four. If I got that right. No. What have I got wrong here? Ah! I'm in! Oh, okay. So this is probably the secret source right here. Min font, max font, start scale, end scale. Okay, so this is the minimum characters you expect and the maximum characters you... Okay. So I get the length of the text. Great. So if the length is less than... Okay, that makes sense. So you're accounting for the minimum font and accounting for the maximum font. And then we take, we get the scale percentage, which is, okay, this is the mathy part. <laughs> so that means that if I make this a smaller number, we should, uh, the thing that gets logged should be a larger number. But it ends up smaller. So I think it's it's working, except that it's the opposite of what it should be. So if I have less text, the, the font size should be a larger number. If you know what I mean. So it's, and I don't really know how to change this in order to fix that. Oh crap, I've really got to go. Um, let me quickly scale percentage times. Could I just make this a divided by? Or maybe I should just wait till you make changes and then refresh the page before I screw something up. What does that give me? It takes a while to load. This and something more. Okay, and then something more made it smaller. I think that actually fixed it. Even more text. That should get smaller. Did it? It's getting two things logged. Why is it logging two things? There should be only one. Oh, okay. First one's the length. Um, okay, so that's probably got to do with the max and min bound, which is why. But okay, so that, if I get rid of all of that, then that number should be larger. But it gets smaller, so I've done something wrong. Maybe it was working the first time, but I just wasn't testing it properly. Let's clear that. This is text. And so the length is 12, and I get 13. This is more text. Yeah. Okay. And it gets larger. So anyway, I'll come back to this later, but, um, cause I've really got to go to the meeting now, but there's obviously something in there. Actually, it would be the scale percentage, wouldn't it? Basically something needs to be inverted so that I end up with larger text rather than smaller text. Once again, I think that I'd be better at this, not in a live stream. I chose the worst time to go into a live stream when I'm doing math, but, um, thank you for, to those who like stuck around. Um, Oh, crap, now I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow morning to do more work. I wish there was more time in a day. I just want to do this all the time. I want this, I just want like my life to be writing code all the time and spending time with my girlfriend, of course. All right. Anyway, I got to head off. Um, I really wish I could stick around, but I can't. Thank you so much, Tom, for all of your help. Dot's just like, oh, wait, I got another code pen here. Well, it'd be just rude not to check that out. So let's try this. dot io slash um j s s t r n slash pen slash m m m m z b or fancy
Okay. So if I set that to a twelve. Cool, and if I set it to a four, so you can play around with the scale a little bit more. Okay, that's awesome. That's totally the right kind of thing. I might have to mix some of this with um with Tom's idea because no oh, hang on. The only thing I need to do now is get some sort of a percentage included for new lines, knowing how many new lines there are. But yeah, that's awesome. All right. Anyway, I gotta go. Thank you so much, everyone. Had a blast. I'll see you in a, in a, another live stream in the future. We're gonna get this done, and then when it's done, it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be able to record podcasts, and everything will just happen for me. Super cool. All right. Bye for now. See you guys.